I say opportunities that having a chiplet kind of archit architecture puts out there is this concept of maybe you know this one functional block that's working really well at a um, you know um, not cutting edge technology maybe it's like uh, you know 13 nanometer or something like that and it works quite it works perfectly well we've got you know great um, confidence in its reliability and as long as it has a standardized um, kind of IO you know um, uh, interface then we'd have the ability to put that together you know in a similar same package as uh, another chiplet that's on you know the absolute latest cutting edge process node I'm just making sure that we spend time, you know, looking at the interconnect and making sure that the interconnects are going to work. Hi, everyone. It's Judy Warner. Welcome back to this week's Ecosystem Podcast. Today, we're going to be talking all about chiplets. I've asked my friend Stephen Slater, who is the Director of Product Management at Keysight, to come on and talk to you about everything that's going on in the industry with chiplet technology. We talk about the UCIE consortium and how that's coming along, the ecosystem that is enabling the technology. We talk about who needs it and why, who's being successful at it. And we're going to give you some deep insights from his insider view. If you enjoy this podcast, Keysight is also doing a webinar that will go deeper into a simulation software that they offer as part of a ecosystem solution. I put that and several other places you can plug into the ecosystem for chiplets below. Without further ado, let's jump into our conversation with Steven Slater of Keysight EDA. Hi, Stephen. Thanks so much for joining us today. It's been a while and I look forward to catching up with you and talking a little bit about chiplets today. Yeah, it's always great to uh, to catch up with you. I think the last time we met was at Design Con. So uh, yeah, it was, and it seemed like a brief meeting too because we were all running around like crazy. So absolutely. eager to catch up. I know you're a busy guy. Well, today I wanted to talk to you about chiplets, and I know that's something you've had your hands on for a little while. And I'm sure the audience wants to learn more about kind of where we are with chiplets. So we've been talking about chiplets. It seems like for. I don't know, a few years, at least in my estimation, maybe longer. But like, where are we? Can you tell us like where we are as far as adoption goes across the industry? Yeah, I think for, for us, we were um, we were very big into uh, HBM, simulating HBM. And, um, and you know, it was like silicon interconnects between that and, uh, and another die. Um, and that was kind of our first kind of uh, interest area into that space. Um, but probably about you know uh, two years ago at um, at a you know a design con, all of a sudden um, that's what uh, everybody was talking about was um, hey you know we are we, this is really going to be part of the future, um, and I, I think it was mostly you know all of the the big players the types of customers like um, you know Intel and AMD who were already having successful kind of designs that were making use of chiplets that was the way that they were getting to the the size and scale and yield that they that they required, um, and uh, you know everyone was uh, really interested. And probably you know in the last year, there's been a, a, a ton of um, development and progress, and especially with things like um, the UCIE standard, um, so Universal Chiplet Interconnect, um, that uh, that you know came to fruition and uh, helped um, to ensure that uh, we you know they can build a, a chiplet ecosystem for the future. Right. So who who needs this technology and, and um, who's sort of, why do they need it and who's adopting this technology since you've been up close to some of the UCIE um, standards and information? What are you seeing? Yeah. So I, I think um, it's important to note, you know, think about who's, who's successful with it today. And, um, you know, a lot of the uh, drivers for, for needing to, to go to a chiplet, um, you know, type of architecture was because um, the individual dies themselves were getting so big that um, you ended up getting really poor yield out of a, out of a given wafer. Uh, so they decided that if they could actually, you know, break them down into small functional blocks, Therefore, you're throwing away much, you know, fewer parts of the, the the wafer, so you get this higher yield, and yet you could still get, you know, great performance because you can, um, you know, put them together and make sure that, um, you know, they're they're connecting um, with very high speed interconnects. Um, 
And in doing so, you actually get to then get past, you know, the the total radical limit of um, of a you know a given uh, technology. So you can start to build these really giant um, processes as would be needed for things like, um, you know, AI um, engines that go into uh, into data centers. So um, those type of com- companies are very successful already, um, and there's certain uh, foundries out there, such as you know TSMC, that have been putting in place um, a you know most definite like a s- series of processes to enable. Um, these chiplets to be produced, to be packaged together, and um, and uh, and yeah, there's a, a lot of things that need to line up in order to make this a success. But um, you know, that's uh, you know, looks to be you know the future. So that's part of the question: who's successful today? But you know, your real question is who who needs this? Um, and I was really surprised actually that it really touches upon many different industries. So the types of um, you know customers who are in- interested, those who have joined the, the UCIE consortium, um, come from all manner of like aerospace defense. Um, and then also, you know, uh, those from um, the automotive space as well. And, you know, what I hear is that these companies are interested in pursuing chiplets because it gives them better reuse inside their own company. So they'd be developing chiplets that would then be um, reused on evolutions of products. So um, inside their own company. And then also them thinking about new business models to be able to sell that particular functional block that they do a really good job at that's their um, competitive differentiator and being able to sell that on an open you know, chiplet ecosystem market. Um, and I think that's really exciting for everybody. So, um, you know, that's what uh, Keysight would really like to hope to enable. So when when they put these chiplets together, these functional blocks that you talked about, are are they put together in scale, like you said, that can be reused, or are they highly customized for specific applications? Um, yeah, so the, the individual both. blocks, you know, it, it's, it can be a little bit of both, right? So I, I think one of the, 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 the key points about it would be that um, as you progress to lower and lower process nodes, not every part of the IC scales down accordingly. So um, there's, uh, and in doing so, in trying to scale something down, then there's a lot of re-verification work that needs to happen to make sure that the circuit still still works. So kind of the uh, one of the interesting um, I say opportunities that having a chiplet kind of archi- architecture puts out there is this concept of maybe you know this one functional block that's working really well at a um, you know um, not cutting edge technology maybe it's like uh, you know thirteen nanometer something like that and it works quite it works perfectly well we've got you know great um, confidence in its reliability and as long as it has a standardized um, kind of I/O you know um, uh, interface, then we would have the ability to put that together, you know, in the same, same package as uh, another chiplet that's on, you know, the absolute latest cutting edge process node. I'm um, just making sure that we spend time, you know, looking at the interconnect and making sure that the interconnects are going to work um, with with best signal integrity. And so, sort of as an adjunct to that question, since we're talking to engineers here, right? What are you seeing as far as the enablers of the technology, which is some of what you just talked about, but what are also some of the roadblocks maybe? And maybe you can speak to sort of where we're going with those enablers and roadblocks as, as you see it. Yeah, for me, the enablers have to be, um, you know, the the collaborations and, um, you know, kind of like a, a open, uh, you know, a sharing of, uh, of standards, things like this. So what I do see out there is... Um, I see some convergence in, for instance, the I.O. So it seems like UCIE is uh, is really taking off. There's a lot of uh, companies that are, um, again, part of that consortium. Um, a lot of papers that get produced now that are talking about UCIE. Um, I would also like to call out you know, companies like AlphaWave that um, uh, have created UCIE Phi IP that you can just take and drop into your IC. And they've actually you know, taped it out and, uh, and uh, they... They simulated with our tool set to make sure before they got there that even at the advanced um, packaging, you know, the um, the UCIE advanced uh, high-speed interconnect, 
um, that they were able to get, you know, good signal integrity and then taped it out and verified. And so, you know, that fire IP is for sure, you know, a, a big enabler of, uh, of, you know, this, uh, this ecosystem, but it's more than that because you have to look at then to the things like the foundries and their own introduction of, um, certain standards for how you send all your data files. Cause this now is about kind of, uh, three dimensional structures and how they're going to be connected yeah. and, uh, and so they've come up with their own, um, TSMC came up with a uh, 3D blocks uh, specification and there's many EDA companies that are participating to help define it and, uh, and take it forward. But, you know, these are the, these are the, the right types of things that need to happen in order for, um, you know, many, many more companies to be able to play in this uh, chiplet ecosystem. You know, if you were looking at a scale of zero, we have no chiplets to five, we can scale. Like, where are we? Would you say one to yeah, five? I, think, I still think we're in the, the the early stages. You know, maybe uh, maybe two along the path. That's great because you know, last year I probably would have said one, but um, I, I just I'm basing that just upon the amount of interest that we see and the amount of customers that are talking to us about you know trying to simulate uh, things like uh, UCIE. Um, you know, uh, some of the challenges, I think I missed that from your earlier question, but some of the challenges or barriers are still out there. Um, of course, when you introduce new packaging technologies like this, there's always going to be those certain um, uh, technical aspects that need to be that need to be figured out. So, for instance, um, everything's going to be connected now in a package, but, you know, what about um, thermal? You know, what about uh, vibrational mechanical stress? You know, these are items which... Um, somehow need to be kind of co-optimized uh, with the the design or, or at least like the floor planning of where you're going to put um, the in individual functional blocks. Um, so there's always going to be a trade-off between things like, you know, the signal integrity. You could have perfect signal integrity by making sure that the critical nets are really, really close together and making sure you don't have um, excessive crosstalk. Um, but you're going to have to be a little careful because of things like thermal considerations um and not to mention power as well i think power is going to be um very very interesting because each of these individual um you know chiplets needs to be powered up but that means you have to be very careful thinking about um the power distribution network as you come up through the package and then you know up into the individual chiplets um and i think that's going to become a bigger a biggest challenge for people to simulate and verify before they go and 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 build well, you had mentioned when you were discussing Alpha Wave the 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 necessary piece of simulation, which of course is your your wheelhouse. What what does the simulation landscape look at look like right now? Is that something you're developing? It sounds like you're working with the UCIE consortium and and how are people going to simulate um, this early in the game and as they move forward? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so um, I, I think we're in a very, uh, very, very uh, favorable position at the moment. We came first to market with um, a simulation um, analysis flow for UCIE. So it's a, it's a signal integrity, um, you know, looking at um, how, how open the eyes will be under various considerations. Those, those eyes and how they open up you need a you need a correct settings per the standard for the transmitter and good models for the transmitter. You need models for the channel. You need models for the receiver. Um, and not only that, there's a few special things in the standard, such as this is like for kind of a compliance that they call like a, a voltage transfer function, um, and another one which is a, you know a quad data rate clocking, which um, so it's QDR. That's something that would be needed for the the really faster speeds of um, of UCIE. And you know, we're very thankfully we built this uh, simulation solution. We called it um, Chiplet Fire Designer, but it's uh, a part of Advanced Design System ADS, which uh, many of your viewers will probably be aware of. Yeah, of course. Well, I know that I only have you for a, sh a few short moments. This is you know, talking to engineers. What would you recommend, or where would you recommend they go to learn more, say about Chiplet Phi, but also just learn or getting involved in the consortium, or just getting up to speed on Chiplet technology and trying to figure out if it's a direction they should go. Yeah, absolutely. 
Yeah, I definitely think, um, you know, a, a lot of the, the big shows out there, such as uh, DAC, Design Automation Conference, as well as things like uh, the Chiplet Summits uh, that, that happen, and they happen in various locations. I think those are great places to be uh, attending to try to hear the, the latest. Um, I definitely know that uh, for the ECIE consortium, um, they they have you know good uh, like working group meetings. Um, finally, I would say that if you want you know if, if what you heard today sounds kind of interesting from the simulation perspective, then um, we do have a webinar coming up, and this webinar is going to be actually showing the simulation solution, this Chiplet Fi Designer. So um, I believe it's uh, a couple of dates for uh, Americas and Europe, but it's coming up later in July. So. Um, you know, please uh, look out for that. And maybe uh, Judy might have a, a link um, that we could uh, post. For that. Yeah, I'll make sure that I get that from you and your team. So thanks for that and the other recommendations as well. Stephen, thank you again for giving us the short treatment on chiplets. I think it's very interesting. And um, my last question is, you, are you seeing a lot of chiplet papers pop up at, say, DesignCon and DAC and some of these shows? Yeah, definitely a marked uh, increase, and um, and for instance, in things like um, I would say a, a DAC, a lot of the poster sessions, talking a lot about um, you know floor planning and placement, and um, you know trying to optimize uh, you know for for you know a, a better overall um, performance, and uh, not to mention it's probably a topic for another day, but uh, you know the the rise of um, of AI you know inside of uh, yeah. EDA tools and. I think that's, uh, that's another very, very interesting kind of uh, direction that the industry is taking. Yeah, absolutely. It seems like it's everywhere at all times yes. and all platforms. So, well, Stephen, thank you again for coming on and giving us at least a brief overview of where the industry is at with chiplets. I will definitely share the Keysight webinar and some of those other links you shared with me. Thanks again, and come back soon. We'll, we'll, we'll geek out about AI and EDA tools later. That sounds like a good topic as well. Absolutely. Thanks so much, Judy. I appreciate it. Thank you for everyone watching. Thanks for everyone for joining today. I hope you enjoyed this conversation with Stephen Slater of Keysight. We'll see you next week. Until then, remember to always stay connected to the ecosystem.